Hey friends, Miss Amanda's class. Welcome to Mrs. Piggle Wiggle Read Aloud. We are going to start chapter four, The Selfishness Cure. What does it mean to be selfish? What do you think? Selfish means, I think, to just kind of want everything for yourself and just think about yourself and to not think about others and what other people need and other to not think about other people's feelings. Dick Thompson was certainly a nice looking boy, but he, and he was smart in school and behaved well at the table. But whenever his name was mentioned, people said, poor, poor Mrs. Thompson. She has such a problem. Whatever will she do with that child? I guess that you would feel simply dreadful if people said a thing like that when your name was mentioned, but Dick didn't. You see, Dick, Dick Thompson was a selfish, greedy boy, and he cared more about being selfish, a selfish, greedy boy, than about what people said. When children came over to his house to play, Dick said, don't touch that, that's mine. You can't play with that, that's mine. Put down my ball, take off my skates. Each time this happened, at least each time it happened where his mother could hear Dick saying, that's mine, she would send him up to his room to think about how selfish he was. Dick would go right upstairs, for he was very obedient. But instead of thinking how bad it was to be selfish, he would sit on the bed and swing his legs and think, everything in this room is mine, and nobody is going to touch my things. He certainly was a problem. One day, Dick's mother bought a big box of peppermint sticks. She called Dick into the house and said, Now, dear, I have bought this large box of peppermint sticks for you, but I want you to share them with your friends. There are about 50 sticks in the box, and I want you to divide them with all the children in the neighborhood. Don't forget the little children, Dick, and you might send one or two to old Mrs. Burry. She is so fond of peppermint. Dick said, thank you, mother, for the fine candy. Then he took the, took the box out of doors and put it in the basket on the front of his bicycle and allowed the neighborhood children to look at the peppermint sticks. But he warned them, this is my candy. And if anyone touches it, I will hit them with my baseball bat. Ooh, he's even threatening violence. It's not good. The children in the neighborhood had known Dick for some time and they knew that he meant what he said. But as they looked at the candy, they wished and wished they could have just one stick. Dick's mother, watching from the window, saw all the children gathered around Dick and the box of candy in the basket on the front of his bicycle, and she thought to herself, just look at my little Dick, dividing the candy with all of his friends. I just knew he would learn to be generous. And she tapped on the window, and when Dick looked around, she waved and smiled at him. Dick waved and smiled back. But unfortunately, just then, Mary O'Toole, who was quite daring, reached in and grabbed a stick of candy and crack. Dick clouded her on the hand with the baseball bat. In a flash, his mother saw what was really going on. She flew out the front door, took Dick firmly by the arm and marched him upstairs, thrust him into his room and slammed the door. Then she went downstairs and out the front door took the box of candy and told Mary, Mary O'Toole to divide it up among all the children, even the little ones, and to take one or two sticks over to old Mrs. Burry because she was so fond of peppermint. There were 15 children, not counting Dick, and 50 sticks of candy, so each child was given three sticks and old Mrs. Burry got five. From the window of his bedroom, Dick watched Mary divide the candy and he was just furious. After all the candy had been divided, Mrs. Thompson went into the house and called Dick's father. She said, Herbert, I know that you are busy and you don't like to have me call you at the office, but I'm so worried about Dick. Dick's father said, what's the matter? Is he sick? Dick's mother said, no, but I wish he were. It would be so much simpler. Mr. Thompson said, now, dear, I am very busy, so perhaps you had better wait until I come home. Mrs. Thompson said, Herbert, this cannot wait another minute. And she told him about the candy and the baseball bat. Mr. Thompson said, why not give him a good hard spanking? Tell him that you are going to give him something 
that he can keep all to himself. Ha ha. Now, Herbert, this is not a laughing matter, and I don't think spanking will solve a thing. I just don't know what to do or which way to turn. And Mrs. Thompson began to cry, partly because she felt so humiliated over Dick's selfishness, and partly because she knew that crying was the only way to get action out of Dick's father. <laughs> Dick's father said, now, now, dear, tears won't help. Let me see. Shall I hop into a taxi and come home and thrash Dick? Dick's mother only cried louder. Dick's father said, I know, I know just what to do. Call that Mrs. Piggle, Piggle, call that Mrs. Riggle Spiggle or whatever her name is, you know, the one who cured, cured, her, cured Hubert Prentice. <laughs> he called her Mrs. Riggle Spriggle. Oh, you mean Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. Oh, Herbert, you are so wonderful. I knew you would think of something. I'll call her right away. And Mrs. Thompson blew her nose and cheered right up. Mothers always do, do cheer up when they think of Mrs. Piggle Wiggle because she knows so much about children. After all, she has had about a thousand little boys and girls come to her house to pull taffy, play checkers, bake cookies, drink cambric tea, and dig for the pirate gold buried in her backyard. And so she has plenty of opportunity to learn about childish ailments and the cures for them. She was certainly the person to ask about Dick, the selfish boy. And so Mrs. Thompson telephoned her. She said, hello, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. This is Mrs. Thompson, Dick's mother. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, hello, Mrs. Thompson. I have rather expected you to call. Mrs. Thompson said, you have? Why? Because I know Dick very well, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. And although he is a dear little boy and the most well-mannered child who comes to visit me, never once forgetting to say thank you and please, he is very selfish. Oh, I know he is, I know he is, said Mrs. Thompson, almost crying because she was so ashamed that Mrs. Piggle Wiggle should know how selfish Dick was. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, Now, Mrs. Thompson, don't feel sad. Selfishness and greediness are just diseases like measles and chicken pox and can be cured. But we must start now before another day passes because Dick is such a nice little boy and we want every, everyone to like him as we do. Oh, do you like him in spite of his selfishness? asked Dick's mother. Of course I do, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. I love all children, but it distresses me when I see a child who has a disease like selfishness or answer backism or won't put your toys, toys, toys away and his parents don't do a thing to cure him. But I want to cure Dick, said his mother. I will do anything to cure him. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, the selfishness cure is very real, is really very simple, but the rules must be followed very strictly. You will have to come down here and get my selfishness kit. And at the same time, I will give you the directions for its use. Thank you so much, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, said Mrs. Thompson. I'm coming right now. And she hung up the phone, slipped on her jacket and ran all the way to Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's house. When she arrived, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle was on the front porch waiting for her. On the porch beside her was quite a large green metal box which, with the words selfishness kit painted on the side in white letters. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle invited Dick's mother to sit down and then she opened the kit. Inside were about 25 padlocks of various sizes. There were great big ones about the size of apples down to tiny ones not much larger than a penny. Also, there were screws and a screwdriver and a box of cloth labels that said Dick, a box of blank gummed labels, a small can of white paint, a small can of black paint, a small paintbrush, and a pastry bag. This is a large bag with a nozzle at the end, which when filled with frosting can be squeezed and the frosting comes out the end like, a tooth, like toothpaste and it can be formed into words. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, Mrs. Thompson, these padlocks are for Dick's drawers, his closets, his toy chest, his bicycle, his bedroom door, his nightstand drawer, and his toothbrush. As soon as you get home, put the padlocks on everything he owns and give him the keys. This is to assure him that he and he alone can touch his things. The name labels are to be sewn in all of his clothes and the gummed stickers are to be put in all of his books 
even his school books, notebooks, pencil boxes, and are to be pasted on his ruler, crayons, and paints. On each sticker, put in large letters with this black paint, Dick's book, do not touch, Dick's notebook, do not touch, and so on. On every toy he owns, you must paint in either black or white paint, Dick's ball, don't touch, Dick's bat, don't touch. Put the name of the toy first and then don't touch. This pastry bag is to be filled with a simple white frosting and used to mark Dick's sandwiches, his fruit, his cookies, and his plate for each meal. That's all there is to it. I expect you will be returning the selfishness kit before the week has passed. Hmm, I wonder how this is gonna work. Mrs. Thompson said, I do hope so, Mrs. Pickle Wiggle. Are you sure it will work? It has cured hundreds of other children and I see no reason why it should not cure Dick. A week or even less, I should say. Mrs. Thompson thanked Mrs. Piggle Wiggle very much and then, lugging the kit, she walked home. As soon as she had hung up her jacket, she began sewing the labels in all of Dick's clothes. He asked her what she was doing and when she showed him, he was as happy as could be. Boy, that will just show people who owns my clothes, he said proudly. Mrs. Thompson did not answer, but continued to put the labels on every single stitch of clothing, including his socks and his handkerchiefs. Then she opened the kit and took out the tiniest padlock. She fast fastened Dick's toothbrush to the toothbrush rack with his little padlock, snapped it shut and handed, handed the key, which was not bigger than a pin, to Dick. You had better find a ring to hold your keys, she said. You're going to have about 25 of them. Boy, that's just wonderful, Dick said, fondling the tiny key and thinking, that's my toothbrush, and now nobody but me can touch it. He was very happy. When dinner time came, Mrs. Thompson closed the selfishness kit and took it downstairs to show Dick's father. She told him about Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, and he patted her on the back and said that, was very, that he was very sure everything was going to be all right, and where was the evening paper? After dinner, they went upstairs to put some of the padlocks on and were surprised to find that Dick himself had already put the locks on each of his bureau drawers, his nightstand drawer, his toy box, his closet drawer, and his, bed his closet door and bedroom door. He had also put stickers on, on the covers of all of his books, notebooks, coloring books, crayon and colored pencil boxes, and stamp album. On the stickers, he had printed in black paint Dick's book, don't touch. Dick's notebook, don't touch. Dick's crayons, don't touch, and so on. He was very proud and asked his father if he didn't think he printed well. His father said, you should be able to print well. You have certainly practiced enough. And he looked disgustedly around the room at the stickers which labeled everything. Dick's brush, don't touch. Dick's comb, don't touch, etc. He turned to Dick's mother and said, perhaps we should wear stickers. Dick's mother, don't touch. Dick's father don't touch. I'll bet we'll wear monogrammed underwear when he grows up. Mrs. Thompson said, oh, I hope not, Herbert. Here's a picture. Dick said, come on, Mom and Dad, let's mark all the rest of my stuff. And so they worked until 8.30, marking Dick's bicycle, his baseball, his bat, pitcher's glove, catcher's glove, his toolbox, roller skates, his lunchbox, rubber boots, raincoat, his, his soldier suit, his gun, and his wagon. They even painted Dick's dog, don't touch, on Rover's collar. When they had finished and it was time for Dick to go to bed, he kissed his mother and said goodnight to his father and went happily up the stairs, his ring of keys jingling from his belt. Mrs. Thompson sank down into, into a chair in the, Mr. Thompson sank down into a chair in the living room and lit his pipe. I trust that Mrs. Piggle Wiggle knows what she is doing, he said, because if this cure should not work, our son Dick is going to be the most loathsome boy in the whole world. Mrs. Thompson said, oh no, dear, not in the whole world. The next morning they heard Dick clinking clinking and snapping at his padlocks long before they were up. He was a little late coming downstairs because it took time to padlock all of his drawers, his closet door and the door of his room, but he was very happy and his mother noticed that he had pinned one of the name labels on the outside of his sweater. While he was eating his breakfast marked 
Dick's breakfast, don't touch. His mother marked his sandwiches, Dick's sandwiches, don't touch. And his apple, Dick's apple, don't touch. And his, as well as his cookies and lunchbox. After breakfast, Dick put the lunchbox in the ba basket on his bicycle and noticed proudly the large sign hanging from the crossbar. Dick's bicycle, don't touch. At school, the children paid little attention to the sign on his bicycle, but when he opened his lunchbox and took out the sandwiches marked Dick's sandwiches don't touch, and the apple marked Dick's apple don't touch, and the cookies marked Dick's cookies don't touch, everyone laughed and wanted to see them, and, and in the resulting crowding and pushing, one of the sandwiches was dropped and stepped on, and some of the big boys grabbed the apple and tossed it in the air just above Dick's head, shouting, Throw me Dick's apple! Oh look, I dropped Dick's apple. I wonder if Dick's apple will bounce. And they finally give, gave Dick his apple. When they finally gave Dick his apple back, it was bruised and very dirty. In arithmetic period that afternoon, arithmetic is math, Bobby Slater across the aisle asked Dick for his ruler. And when he saw the label, Dick's ruler don't touch, he began to laugh and reached over and snatched the ruler off D Dick's desk and passed it to Kenny Hatch, who laughed, and passed it to the girl in front of him. And finally, Miss, Miss Crabtree had to come down and get it. When she saw the sign, she laughed too, but she gave the ruler back to Dick. After school, the boys decided to play baseball in the vacant lot by Dick's house. And when Dick brought out his bat and his ball and mitts, and the boys saw Dick's ball, don't touch, Dick's bat, don't touch, they said, we can't touch anything, so let's go home. And they did. Dick went up to his room to play, but he found that somewhere during the day he had lost the key to his closet and that he had locked the key to his toy chest in the chest. So he went down and sat on the front porch and listened to the shouts of the children playing in Hubert Prentice's yard. The, I don't imagine he has very many friends being so selfish. The next morning at school during recess, nobody would play with him and the little girls followed him and laughed. When they marched into school, the children pointed and laughed and laughed and Mrs. laughed and laughed and Mrs. Crabtree came down to see what the trouble was. And she almost laughed herself when she saw the sign someone had pinned on the back of Dick's sweater. It said, this is Dick, don't touch. At lunchtime, the children crowded around to watch him take out his sandwiches. And one little girl said, he's so selfish and greedy. He has his sandwiches marked so he can't share them. Then the children danced around him and chanted, Dick's sandwich, don't touch. Dick's apple, don't touch. Dick's lunchbox, don't touch. Finally, Dick took his lunchbox out and put it in the basket on his bicycle, but the children followed him. And seeing the big sign, Dick's bicycle, don't touch, they yelled and laughed and saying, Dick's, don't touch. Don't touch Dick. Dick's bicycle, don't touch. Don't touch Dick. After school, Dick hurried right home, but he had lost the key to his room. So he went down to the basement to play with his toolbox. But every time he saw the large white sign, Dick's toolbox don't touch, he thought of school and the lunchbox. And he remembered how the children laughed and jeered, and he was ashamed. At dinner, when his mother brought him his plate marked Dick's dinner, dinner don't touch, he said, oh, why do you have to mark my plate? I don't care which one I get. Mrs. Thompson looked significantly at Mr. Thompson and said, all right, Dick, we won't mark your plate if you will share your dessert with Rover. Dick thought for a few minutes and then he carefully broke his chocolate cake into two equal pieces and gave one to Rover who gulped it down and looked grateful. After dinner, Dick told his father he had lost the key to his room and the closet. And so his father took off the padlocks on those doors and on the toy box. Dick said, don't put them back, Dad. I don't care who goes into my room or gets into my stuff. The next morning, Dick got up early and scraped the Dick's lunchbox, don't touch sign from his lunchbox and took the sign off his bicycle. Then he went into his mother and said, Mom, please don't mark my sandwiches. Please don't mark any of my stuff, Mom, Mrs. Thompson said. All right, Dick, I only did it to protect you. Dick said, I don't care who gets my lunch, just don't mark it. At noon, all the children gathered around Dick, but neither his sandwiches nor his apple nor his lunchbox were marked. So they rushed out to see his bicycle, but there was not a sign on it anymore. So they sat down and ate their lunches. 
Right after school that night, Dick hurried home and scraped the marking off his ball and bat and mitts. And then he walked up to where the children were playing baseball and throwing the ball, bat and mitts down beside the catcher, he said, do you want to use these? I don't care. And he went back to his own house. In a little while, Mary O'Toole rang the doorbell and asked Mrs. Thompson if Dick could come out and play. Mrs. Thompson said, he'd love to, Mary, but first he must return something to Mrs. Pigglewiggle. Mary said, tell him to come over to the lot when he gets back. And here are some keys he lost. Mrs. Thompson said, thank you for the keys, dear, but thank goodness they belong to Mrs. Pigglewiggle, not to Dick. She took the keys of the big padlocks and the tiny padlocks up to Dick, who was in his room, busily packing Mrs. Pigglewiggle's selfishness kit. The end, that's the end of chapter four. All right, thank you for joining me for the Mrs. Pigglewiggle read aloud. Um, next, it will be chapter five. Love you guys and miss you guys, bye.